previously spoke at the Charter Committee public hearing on May 22nd. And I want to again express my concern with two proposals in the Charter. Uh, the first one applies to the Finance Director. Uh, currently, the Finance Director reports to City Council. The proposed change would have the Finance Director report directly to the City Manager. Uh, why is this being changed and for what reason? Why change something that's not broken? Uh, the city manager has authority to spend money up to $15,000. And there needs to be an independent voice to speak up when not in agreement regarding use of taxpayer funds. Um, by moving the finance director under the city manager, I think that diminishes the role of that particular office. Um, I believe council's number one responsibility is to be the keeper of taxpayers' money. There needs to be checks and balances. A level of protection is being eliminated here for no valid reason. And my second um, item concerns, when does the vice mayor become mayor? I don't think the proposal addresses this problem since it's still vague as to what the terms <clears throat> disabled and the new term vacant mean. What are the judicial powers of the vice mayor under these circumstances? I think that's lacking in the proposal and I don't think it takes care of problems that we've had in the past. Um, I think we need definitions so that future councils have specific rules on this important area. So I'd like to ask you this question. Um, in October 2017, under these rules, would I have been mayor with full authority? And I don't think the answer is yes, given these proposals. Can I address that, Mr. Phelps? Uh, <clears throat> with regard to the, the finance minister, uh, sorry, finance director, um, you know, the, the report to the city manager does not serve and is not intended to, um, you know, dissipate authority or uh, render the system too different from the way it is now. Um, the, the hiring of the city manager, as well as any firing, uh, is not uh, under the control of the city manager. It has to be, on, is only as it has been by virtue of a uh, vote of council to, to both hire and to fire. Um, the, the natural uh, hope is that by placing the uh, finance minister, finance director, excuse me, under the city manager, it will uh, enhance uh, a working relationship and a coordination that in the past has not always existed. And um, again, I don't think it will uh, alter the functioning or the importance of either office. Uh, that's that's responsive uh, on that issue. Um, with regard to your question about the, the vice mayor, I believe the answer is yes. You, you, you would have been vice mayor under this, I'm sorry, you would have acceded to the office of mayor under the change that, that is being proposed here. Um, the terms vacancy and, and disability, I believe, have general legal uh, acceptance um, in both legislation and we use it in that way and it would be uh, any any questions about what those words mean would come from the way those terms are, are generally used in, in legal documents but if we're if that were true the way the charter is now there is absence or disabled so what does absence mean in that respect i mean i, I still think there is a lot of room for um, misinformation or mis um, explanation or misuse of that and maybe what you need to do is have two sections have a section that speaks to that and have a, spe a section that speaks to vice mayor what those duties are what what duties do the, does the vice mayor or is the vice mayor able to do okay so like if the if the mayor's absent from a meeting okay then the, then the vice mayor runs the meeting, right? But does that mean the vice mayor then has judicial powers so the vice mayor could 
appoint a seat, appoint a committee, um, issue a proclamation. I think those, all those things are, are at issue, Ted, and that's why I think taking another look at that section would, would be helpful, or, or dividing the section into two so that it's more specific as to what role and what authority, what judicial power the vice mayor would have. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I don't think there is any judicial power. That would be right. the power to decide when and where there's been an infraction of law. And that's, I, I don't know if you're using that term correctly, but in terms of your saying uh, a greater delineation of, of authority, um, I'll, I'll take another look at those provisions that deal with the office of mayor and vice mayor. And if you have any suggestions, um, I'd be happy to entertain them. Any other comments? Yes. Just on that point, it, it, as I read the uh, proposed amendments, uh, section 2.06, if the mayor's office is vacant, the vice mayor shall become mayor for the unexpired term, and council shall, shall elect a new vice mayor for the unexpired term. And I think, um, Angie, under the circumstances you had mentioned of last August, September of 2017, um, that amendment would um, certainly cover that situation, that scenario. So the vice mayor becomes the mayor for the unexpired term. Yes, but at that last time, the, when it read the mayor was absent, okay, I could not be the mayor, even though he was absent. So my, my point is, what is absent? It doesn't say what absent now, it says vacant. Yeah, I know it's a vacant, but what does that mean? Vacant because he's not there that day, vacant because he's sick, vacant because he resigned. You know, I mean, vacant means several things. That's, that's my point, is I think that needs a little more clarification. Well, Mr. Fellow. Yeah, sure, if, if I may, um, because I have dealt with these issues on vacancies in uh, other communities, uh, there's a whole body of law in, uh, have statutes and have decisional law about what vacancy is. That, that's, that means the person is no longer the mayor for one reason or another. And that could be resignation, could be uh, failed to, you know, lost their uh, status as an, as an elector, things like that, or obviously passed away, this would be more dramatic. But those sorts of things, no longer able, you know, this isn't a temporary thing, this person is no longer the mayor. And when that happens, the vice mayor, according to my uh, reading of this, uh, uh, becomes the mayor for the remainder of the term. So as far as vacancy is concerned, that's that's what that term means based on my understanding and in, in my practice. It's not, you know, yeah, I sick for a I week or something that. like that. I'm just saying there's three, there's three things here. There's absence, there's disability, and there's vacancy. There's three different situations. It's just my point. No, I'm, I'm not going to belabor it. I'm just saying I don't think it's clear. Okay, okay. I'm, I, I, I think that sentence before applies more to the more temporary um, situation. The absent or disabled is, is the more, you know, they're still the mayor, but they're unable, they're not, they're not yeah. around. Yeah, I know. That, I'm just saying you're explaining it more in depth, but I'm just saying it's not that specific. Okay. I'm not going to keep arguing. I, 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 just it, don't, it, it, I just don't agree with it. I don't think it's taking care of the problem. That's Any other comments? Can we have a motion to close the hearing? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Second.